Hello my dear friends, you're in the military of a summary channel and this video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous 12 hours. We have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we're going to talk about the city of Silidova and according to information we have, according to number of events we received during the previous night, we can make a conclusion that Ukrainians lost control over this city, other words, the city of Silidova has fallen. So this is, for example, the post that was published on the 26th of October at 11 p.m. of Ukrainian time. Situation on Pokrovsk front. The battle for Silidova is nearing its end. Russian army has taken most of the road. Ukrainian army remains in the last streets of the western part, but is expected to completely evacuate these areas by tomorrow, so by the 27th of October. And today, pro-Russian resources at 8 a.m. of the local time of Ukrainian time reported that center group of troops stormed the Ukrainian armed forces fortress city on the way to Korahova and Pakrovsk. The surviving Ukrainian armed forces militants mostly fled across the river to and to Grigorovka. Artillery is working on them. The official announcement of the liberation will be made after the cleanup and consolidation is complete. Vishnova has also been practically taken. So this information was stated today at 8 a.m. of the Ukrainian time. So summarizing everything, we can make a conclusion that the city of Silidova was captured by the Russians. And you know that that was very fast assault. That was very fast assault operation. As we discussed, uh, the Russians began their assault operation in the city of Silidova, the final phase of assault operation of city of Silidova started somewhere around 8th of October. And by the beginning, by the end of the 8th of October and by the beginning of the 10th of October, the Russians managed to improve their positions, just once again to remind you, along the railways and in the northeastern part. And by these two attacks, the Russians shown us the direction of further offensive operation in the direction of Vishnova and the Russian offensive operation in the direction of the mine and the landfill of Karotchenka. And these two operations were the vital and decisive for the Battle of Silidova. After the fall of these two points, this uh, village of Vishnova and the mine of Karotchenka, it after this um, uh, moment, the Ukrainians had probably two or three or five days and the entire city was captured by the Russians. So let's once again take a look at, at how the development, of, at how the clashes were developing on the territory of the city. The Russians were moving from the south, the Russians were moving in the northeastern direction, trying to improve their positions, and the Ukrainians uh, couldn't show any resistance to the armed forces of Russian Federation. And for example, by the 21st uh, of uh, October, the Russians entered the coal mine of Karochenka itself, and by the 21st, uh, 22nd of October, the territory of the mine and the landfill was captured completely. Also, somewhere at the same time, the Ukrainians reported that the Russians managed to enter the southeastern outskirts of the village of Vishnova, and by that attack, the Russians managed to cut one of the supply roads that Ukrainians were using to support their forces on the territory of the settlement. By the 23rd of October, we received the first video in the southeastern part of the settlement with the Russian flag, and this video indicates Russian control over the southeastern part of the settlement. Of the city of Silidova. By the 24th of October, we start receiving updates about the significant progress of the Russians, both in the southern direction, in the northern direction, and in the eastern direction. By the 25th of October, the Russians were already controlled around 50% of the settlement. By the 26th of October, the Russians controlled around 70% of the settlement, without, with the significant number of geolocations that confirm Russian progress. And by the morning of the 27th of October, the Russians established control over the entire city of Silidova and forced the Ukrainians to fall back further in the western direction. The only thing that pub that was published by the Ukrainian side is this video. And in this video we can see lots of Ukrainians that were moving inside of the Max Pro or something like this towards the village of Vishnova. The Ukrainians were in a hurry and in this video we can see how Ukrainian driver uh, passed machine gun and um, let's say rifle to the Ukrainian soldier and the Ukrainian soldier began attacking the Russian positions, possible Russian positions along the main evacuation road. So this is the moment when the Ukrainians began attacking possible Russian positions. And this video confirms that the Ukrainians were breaking through the encirclement and that uh, some of the Ukrainian forces managed to break through the, um, the encirclement, but most of the uh, units were caught in cauldron.
Another important thing that I would like to discuss with you about the city of Silidova, it's good to compare the battle, the assault of Silidova with the assault of Bakhmut Artyomovsk. For example, uh, the Bakhmut Artyomovsk is four times bigger than the city of Silidova. The population before the war uh, was 75,000 people in Bakhmut, and as for the city of Silidova, the population was around 20,000 people, 25. And uh, the Russians, uh, it took around eight months uh, for the Russians to take under control the city of Bakhmut. The operation, the assault operation started in the uh, in the autumn of 2022 and ended in May of 2023. As for the city of Silidova, it took the Russians just two weeks to finish the battle with the settlement. Obviously, the Russians managed to improve their skills, to improve their tactics, their tactical approaches, and now the Russians found a solution most likely how to move further and faster in the western direction. And now we understand that uh, the Ukrainians currently have positions over not very reliable points like villages and the Russians have control over the dominate positions in the city of Silidova. And these things confirms that most likely the Ukrainians would be forced to fall back uh, and everything that is located inside of this red line would be captured by the Russians probably before the new year comes, probably before the 2025 comes. And if the Russians are able to do this, then the Ukrainians will suffer more more problems and new um, different things uh, for the 2025. Now let's move further and let's talk about the city of Kurahova where the Russians continue their offensive operation. They still haven't answered the most central part of the settlement, but the Russians are about to begin doing this. Uh, before these few words about uh, the Garniak, we haven't received anything from the settlement of Garniak, but the sources reported that uh, Ukrainian soldiers withdrew from Garniak because there was already operational encirclement there. So also the Ukrainians are saying that currently the Russians have already begun the assault operation on the uh, village of Kurahovka, the final stronghold of the armed force of Ukraine in this direction. And most likely, and this information was confirmed either uh, both by pro-Russian and pro-Ukrainian sources, most likely the Ukrainians will not be able to hold their lines for a very long period of time, and probably during the next two, three days they will be forced to fall back from the village in the direction of Berestki towards more reliable positions. Now let's move further and let's discuss continuous Kurahova. Uh, during the previous 24 hours, we got additional changes on the ground. According to different mappers, mainly according to neutral mappers and pro-Russian mappers, the Russians, as a result of offensive operation, managed to improve their positions in the vicinity of the village by the name of Astrivske and to move further in the western direction from the village of Maximilianovka. We have one important video that shows us, let's take a look at this video, and this video shows us that the Russians began bombing and attacking the Ukrainian main strongholds. So, as you can see, according to the map there are several uh, let's say networks of fortifications uh, around the city of Kurahova it's uh, let's say it's basically very complex network of the fortifications this is the first company stronghold this is another one uh, there are a few several more uh, strongholds in the southern parts of Kurahova and based on the geolocation based on the video we just we've been just watching uh, we can see that uh, the Russians began bombing these two strongholds and the Russians are preparing themselves before the beginning of further offensive operation with the purpose to take under control these two strongholds and to encircle the uh, city of Kurahova from the west and from the south west. So this is the primary target for the Russians, at least for the next stage of Kurahova assault operation. Now let's move further and let's talk about the south Danish direction where the Russians continue uh, offensive operation and during the previous 24 hours, during the previous night, we got the significant number of videos that confirms confirm additional Russian progress. For example, now you can see, see the situation on the ground by the beginning of the 27th of October. This is the situation uh, by the end uh, at the, of the 26th of October and this is the situation at the beginning of Russian South Donetsk offensive operation. So this is exactly how everything started. The Russians were controlling the uh, Zolotaya Niva, the outskirts of Novodonetsk and the Russians managed to uh, semi-encircle the settlement of Bogoyavlinka from the south and the southwest. But starting on the the 26th of October, the Russians managed to break through the Ukrainian defense belt to move uh, on Ukrainian positions for seven kilometers in depth, and the Russians managed to enter three settlements at once. The Russians answered the city, the village of Shakhtarska, the Russians answered the village of Nova Ukrainka, and the Russians answered the village of Bogoyavlinka. And most likely, the Ukrainians will not be able to hold their lines uh, due to this significant attack, and most likely, the Ukrainians would be.
be forced to fall back in the very near future now let's discuss in details we have video uh, this video was published by the russian sources and in this video we can see a russian attack where the motorcycles the sons of energy were attacking the ukrainian forces we have a uh, lots of armored vehicles personal carriers we have russian stormtroopers that were clearing ukrainian positions also we have the video that was published by the pro-ukrainian sources in this video we can see a significant number of russian armored vehicles and personal carriers that were heading towards the village of Shakhtarska that were under very heavy fire of Ukrainian FPV drone operators. Based on these two videos, we have adjusted uh, these two territories in Russian favor. But as for different mappers, we have additional progress on the ground, and according to neutral mappers and pro-Russian mappers, the Russians managed to enter both the village of Shakhtarska and Novokraenka itself. So once again, this is these are the changes on the ground in comparison with the 26th and the 27th of October. As for the village of Bogoyavlinka, there are very heavy clashes right now the russians are bombing this settlement with the toast and trower systems and the different multiple launch rocket systems which confirms that the russians have prepared the foothold before further advance and clashes on the territory of the settlement itself different mappers reported that the russians indeed managed to answer the western farms as for pro-ukrainian resources the pro-ukrainians haven't published anything that confirm additional progress so i believe they just don't want to show the russian advance because the situation is critical and they don't want to make additional panic so we see that the situation is very difficult and as we were talking during the previous videos uh, we understand that most likely this is exactly that the russians will try to take under control during this stage of offensive everything below this red line and summarizing everything we can see uh, the, f the shapes uh, the first shape of the kurahovo cauldron and uh, which most likely will be created by the end of this year and this will force the ukrainians to fall back from the city of Kurahova in the western direction and then the Russians will answer the operational space and after that they will be able to move whatever in any direction they like. Now let's talk about additional progress and additional Russian offensive operation in the northern Kupin's direction. If you remember, for the previous few days we've been talking a lot about the battle between the village of Vishnyova and Pershatravnyva. Uh, this village has the name of Stepo, the Ukrainians renamed the settlement. And today we got the video how the Russian soldiers managed to raise the flag on some uh, connection, communication um, uh, construction in the northern part of the settlement with the use of FPV drone. So uh, during the previous few days we got lots of updates that the Russians were moving in this direction. And we had the changes on the ground. This is the situation situation for example on the 26th of October uh, we got report from neutral mappers that the Russians managed to improve their positions and during the previous days we got a lot of posts from pro-Russian resources about very heavy clashes in the northern part of the settlement so now we got the geolocations that confirm Russian control as for this direction we understand that the main prime priority for the Russians is to take under control over the south and outskirts of the village of Koponki so to take under control everything that is located in inside of this red line and if the russians are able to do this then they're going to be very high risk for the ukrainians in these fields in nadia in sergeyevka uh, to be cut in cauldron so that's why most likely during the next uh, several days few days the ukrainians will be forced to retreat uh, from this uh, uh, pocket artillery pocket towards the village of barova this will allow the russians to maintain the line of combat contact from makievka itself to this village and then to move further in the southwestern direction the broad front line attack now let's move further and let's talk about the course direction today we got the video that confirms that the russians managed to restore completely the territory the uh, the complete control over the glushkova region uh, this video was published uh, probably yesterday or this morning and in this video we can see how ukrainians we're attacking we're making additional another attempt to break through the government border uh, with the state border between russia and ukraine but uh, this attempt failed at the beginning the previous attempt was more or less successful we are talking about the attempt that ukrainians made probably two three weeks ago uh, after that the russians counter-attacked the ukrainians were forced to fall back and now the ukrainians made the second attempt to break through the border but uh, this attack failed the russians managed to defeat the ukrainians and to force them to uh, 
uh, fall back completely. Based on this video, we have adjusted the territory of Glushkova region completely in Russian favor. So this is the situation uh, as for this direction. As for the Suji direction, during the previous 12 hours, we haven't received anything. The Russians are regrouping and preparing themselves before the final stage of the Suja counteroffensive operation. And that's it for the short video. Military summary channel reminds you, you can damn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.